Welcome to the driver's hub. And this is not the new Scorpio N. This is an older facelifted first gen Scorpio powered by a 2.6 liter CRD engine. And it produces a massive 115 horsepower. And even today, it's quite fast. So you can imagine back in the day, this was one of the fastest SUVs on the road. In fact, in the summer of 2002, when Autocar India tried to chase down a prototype of this vehicle, they couldn't keep up. Although in fairness, they were in a Maruti Zen diesel. But it just goes to show how fast this car was back in its day. Now you might be wondering, why am I driving this in a video about the Scorpio N? We'll get to the new car shortly, but before that, I'm going to take you through some of the old cars to understand what made them so beloved and to see just how big a step up the new car is over its predecessors. If you want to skip ahead to other parts of this video, use the chapters below. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and do consider subscribing. First Scorpio was a very important st step up for Mahindra as a car maker. They wanted to offer a big, rugged, handsome SUV with decent features to slot in below the other Indian SUV of the time, the Tata Safari. And by the time the Scorpio launched, the Safari already had a big fan following. But it was out of reach for most enthusiasts because uh, it costed about 10 lakhs at the time and the Scorpio wanted to slot in below that. The Scorpio came about after 550 crores and 6 years of development. It debuted with an all new chassis, new body, new engines and it was unlike anything that Mahindra was making at that time. This also meant Mahindra had to upgrade its manufacturing capabilities and the joint venture with Ford help them learn a thing or two about making cars rather than 30-year-old jeeps. For all the development they did, it paid off. The Scorpio was a big hit. Mahindra didn't stop just there. Right after the year after its launch and over the course of its life, they made constant improvements to keep the Scorpio relevant in today's times. The first most significant update came in 2006 when they got rid of the bouncy leaf springs at the rear and in came a new 5 link coil setup and it was tuned by none other than Lotus. Yes, maybe it's not their best work, let's just say that. But right from 2006, Mahindra had a 5 link coil setup at the rear and the new car's fancy new pentalink name it's nothing new, it's the same technology. Apart from this, it got a slight facelift with those iconic double bubble towering tail lamps, a fake hood scoop and bumper extensions. In 2008 came the second most significant update to the Scorpio in the form of the 2.2 liter Amhok engine. That hood scoop was opened up now feeding air to a top-mounted intercooler. As you can see, this is a much later version of the Scorpio, but the 2008 car which had arranged developed a brake issue on the day of the shoot. It also came with an automatic gearbox for the first time, but it's best if you don't talk about it. <laughs> Let's just say that reliability was not one of its strongest suits. Mahindra even added rain-sensing wipers, automatic headlamps, steering-mounted controls, and a tire pressure monitor all of this back in 2008. In 2009 came the first major facelift with a completely new front fascia and a sleeker hood scoop. Apart from that hood scoop, the new looks divided opinions across enthusiasts and new buyers alike. Yet the Scorpio continued to be a strong seller till 2014 when it was replaced by the second generation car. Now on the face of it, this might not look all new and it's not. The body was the same one from 2002, but it did have a new hydroform, lighter, stiffer chassis. With this update though, it got all new interiors 
and double barrel headlamps which improved the drivability at night. Even with all the mechanical changes, the ride was still far from perfect. Paying little heed to road manners and driving dynamics, Mahindra continued extracting more power from the MHOG, up to 140 horsepower from the 2018 facelift onwards. And even with appalling ergonomics, something that plagued the first Scorpio as well, Mahindra kept adding lots of features to keep it relevant in today's market of pseudo SUVs. But the Scorpio stuck to its original intentions. A rugged, handsome SUV with lots of features. And now that the Hexa and the original Safari are extinct, it really has no competition. This car will continue to be sold alongside the new Scorpio with a slight facelift. So, where does the new car fit in? Comfort, let's start with that. How would you define comfort? Whatever words or metric you would use to quantify comfort, this Scorpio is nothing like the older cars. Part of that comfort comes from the ability to make the passengers feel isolated from the road while dealing with the small micro movements. The Scorpio does this very well with the new chassis and the new body. Both of them are lighter, stronger and stiffer than before and more importantly, both of them have finely tuned natural frequencies so that you won't get small vibrations by resonance. Of course, comfort also means having a ride that smoothens out the bumps and yet is stiff enough to control the mass of the car. The Scorpio uses a variation of the frequency selective dampers found on the XUV700. It's called a frequency dependent damping here and you can feel those dampers working hard to get that sophistication in the ride. The party piece here is the Watts link, which is a link that prevents the rear axle from moving side to side. This, combined with the long travel front suspension, means you can hammer through bad roads at speed. The Watts link was previously seen only on the Endeavour, which was the benchmark for ride and handling of big ladder frame SUVs. However, at low speeds and over undulations, there is still a lot of side-to-side -side movement, something that the Endeavour had pretty much figured out. As you speed up, the ride gets better. Another part of that comfort comes from the ability to make the driver feel relaxed and to have a good visibility, good ergonomics and of course ease of use. In terms of visibility, the Scorpio just takes the cake. Up front, you get a very shallow dash and very upright windscreen which also eliminates a lot of the blind spots. All the buttons here are within easy reach and the instrument cluster that is very easy to read. The multi-information display has a really good resolution and refresh rate which makes it very easy on the eyes. Adding to the ease of use is the light steering which does weigh up as speeds increase but it's still not as heavy as I would like. And rounding up the comfort factor is the overall NVH and the smooth shifting gearbox. All these elements that contribute to the comfort has brought the new Scorpio to a whole different level. Not just several levels above the older Scorpios, but almost right up there with the benchmark that is the Ford Endeavour. Now, I couldn't get the diesel car for this test. This is the petrol automatic. 
and I feel kind of odd because I'm not used to driving a big body on frame SUV with a thirsty petrol engine. I'm used to the effortless torque of a diesel, but this engine is no slouch. Now remember, when the Scorpio was first launched, it came with two engine options. One was of course the 2.6 diesel we saw earlier, and it also came with a Renault sourced 2 litre naturally aspirated petrol, making about 116 horsepower. This engine though makes 203. That's a lot of power going to the rear wheels alone. Now there is none of that kickback you get from highly strung turbo petrol engines. This builds power very linearly and throughout the rev range it will just keep on pulling. You won't believe the speeds you'll achieve unless you look down and see the fuel consumption. Currently I'm getting around five and a half, six. Paired to this engine is a six-speed torque converter and immediately it is clear that it's a far cry from the previous automatic Scorpios. The upships are mostly smooth and the downships are surprisingly quick for a torque converter. As a whole package, the powertrain and the drivetrain complement each other perfectly and it feels like a flawless fit for the new Scorpio. Pick the diesel automatic if you're keen on road tripping and you won't be disappointed. Let me make something clear. This is not a car you would push around corners. Sure, it'll make the corner, but you wouldn't want to do it more than once. This is a car best driven at 6th or 7th tenths and you'd be happy to cruise along all day long. While there's no real threat of rolling the car over, there's a lot of body roll. The brakes are very powerful and will stop the hulking mass without drama, but it does not feel progressive. The steering, which is light at low speeds, is a breeze to use, but it should have weighed up more at high speeds. It's not very direct, but it provides decent feedback, which is perfectly fine for a car like this. The way this car handles, keeping in mind that the ride is good as well, makes this a very strong contender for a long distance road tripper. At first glance, the Scorpio is a mixed bag in terms of looks. The front manages to look butch and sophisticated at the same time. The bonnet is big and flat, but it has lost the very cool wood scoop. The grille comes down flat like the old Scorpios and it pays homage to the original car with the horizontal fins and Mahindra's iconic six slat elements. The lights are very well detailed with double parallel LEDs and projector high beams and a swiping LED indicator. The DRLs are placed next to the air dam and are designed to mimic a scorpion's sting. It also incorporates an LED fog lamp. Down the sides, you get smart looking alloys that tie in with the rest of the design very well and you'll realize that the thick plastic paddings of the old Scorpios are now gone and this car relies on its sheer expanse of metal to look butch. The side profile itself has a very proportionate classic SUV look till the rear wheel after which it starts to look like a people mover. The door mirrors are huge probably to compensate for the lack of a 360 degree camera system. Down the window line is a strip of chrome that runs the length of the glass house and kicks back up around finishing in another Scorpion Sting motive, which doesn't look half bad. And for the first time in the Scorpio, you get disc brakes on the rear wheels. But the tailgate just doesn't seem to fit with the rest of the car. The tail lights have garnered their own interest on the fan land of the internet, but I don't think they're a bad design. What I do not like about these lights is for all its fancy looks and swiping indicators, it doesn't house a reverse light. I don't understand why manufacturers do this, but in bumper to bumper traffic, it's impossible to see a reverse light mounted this low. Like the exterior, the interior is all new and it looks like a million bucks compared to the old cars. The door cards really look smart and the color combination of brown and black with brushed silver elements really screws up the look. But I don't understand Mahindra's decision to use piano black for the switch panel on the doors. Good luck keeping that scratch free. The seats are comfortable and supportive and the driver gets electronic adjustments as well. Most of the touch points are soft. I just wish the steering wheel was as soft to hold as the leather gear knob. 
I'm really happy that Mahindra decided to go with a smaller single pane sunroof. The Scorpio already being a tall car does not need the added weight penalty of a big heavy glass right at the top of the car. The infotainment screen responds really well to touch and is actually of a decent size but it looks small because of the thick bezels around it. The camera system feed looks like it's from 1996 and it has horrible lag as well. But the 12 speaker Sony sound system deserves special mention here. There's plenty of headroom, knee room, shoulder room in the first two rows, but the third row is pretty useless and eats up valuable cargo space. For a more in-depth review of the interior and of the whole car, do follow the link in the description to our website. Overall, the new Scorpio M holds its own really well among the competition which includes anything in the 12 to 30 lakh bracket and that is a long list of cars. In fact, Mahindra alone offers three very desirable cars at similar prices. Which brings me to the question, why would you want the XUV over the Scorpio or the other way around? And where does the Thar fit in all of this? Because I've seen people who had booked a Thar and while awaiting delivery, buy the XUV 700 instead. Both of those are very different vehicles with utterly different use cases and yet it seems that both share an overlapping customer profile. Is that going to happen with the Scorpio and the XUV 700 as well? Well, given the similarities on the surface, both being three-row comfortable family SUVs with apparently similar use cases, buyers are likely to be confused which one to go for. But in reality, these two are very different cars. The XUV, being a brilliantly designed monocoque underneath, is much lighter and stiffer, whereas the Scorpio's rugged body-on-frame construction can take a lot more abuse. The XUV is easier to drive, handles better, and rides more maturely over smooth and lightly broken roads. But the Scorpio rides better where there are potholes instead of roads. On the feature front as well, the XUV is better equipped with larger screens, a panoramic sunroof, and a much better camera system. The Scorpio, even with the new features and newfound sophistication over its predecessors, continues to be a rugged, tough SUV which you won't mind hammering through bad roads. And with a proper low-ratio gearbox and a mechanical locking rear differential, your adventure will continue when the road ends. Both these cars take a very different approach to arrive at the same conclusion, to be a safe, family SUV with immense road tripping potential. The Thar on the other hand is more hardcore, bare bones with excellent off-road prowess but that compromises its on-road capabilities. In a way, the Scorpio acts as the perfect bridge between the hardcore Thar and the sophisticated XUV 700. It's a proud moment as an Indian to see Mahindra suddenly become one of the most desirable car makers in the country. Suddenly in a span of two years, Mahindra offers three distinctive products that everyone seems to want and they're willing to wait to get their hands on one which shows the impression these three stalwarts have made on the Indian people. The dream that started with the first Scorpio has now turned big, offering homegrown, world-class products that wins the hearts and minds of the people. Good job, Mahindra. A special thanks to Assam Motors Tinsukia for providing us the vehicle. Thank you for watching the driver's house.